So let's look at uh, these pieces now then in, in more detail. So to, to really get started, um, as we went through those, um, those uh, key elements in a, uh, from bottom up, uh, uh, from bottom up approach, meaning that we need to look at the foundational pieces and then how different pieces sit on, on top of that. And then also, also uh, finally making sure that we also look at the sustainability aspect, but as said, to be looked at uh, developed in parallel, but for the visualization, the, the, the foundational aspect is really getting the governance piece initiated uh, uh, to begin with. <clears throat> so when we look at the governance, the need for the governance, what we have done so far uh, is, is very much globally validated that, uh, first of all, in many ecosystems, uh, there may be feeling that uh, the, the, the challenges that you have in your ecosystem or your ecosystem development, that those are locally unique, but uh, a lot, a majority of the activities in ecosystem development are in fact uh, um, globally shared. So, very much same similar problems uh, in all of the ecosystems development where some of the key things are that all the ecosystems are really struggling with this fragmentation of eco ecosystem information and connectivity, pr connectivity problems of making that information flow and available for all of the ecosystem actors collectively. So, in practice, that means that, that it's really hard for, in, in the ecosystem perspective, to really know what is going on in regards to new companies and innovations uh, happening in your key markets or key industry verticals and so forth. Uh, who are the different key actors and in an organization level, uh, the actual uh, individual level, key people, key organizations, their roles, their backgrounds, their motivators, and so forth. What is relevant for your business? So if you, if you are looking to um, uh, operate an accelerator model, uh, what are the key actors that are relevant for your business? Or if you are the entrepreneur building a venture, what services in general are relevant for you? Uh, who are doing what and why, so what, like many support organizations and organizations in general, uh, part of the ecosystem, uh, they may have a very broad offering of things that they do, but in reality, in their website, for example, but in reality, 80% uh, of the effort goes to some specific, uh, more focused activities, and that is their primary activities, and in addition, the, the kind of the external information may include updated or project-based things that are not going to be relevant, you know, uh, going forward. Um, where and where and when are things happening? So, so from timing aspect, when are things going to be available uh, in regards to your own startup development phases? Are they available now? Are they available six months from now? Where, can, where do I need to go to, to, to get that support? And, um, and, and then really anyone entering into that ecosystem as a, as a new entrepreneur or as a new service function or as a new organization or uh, international company, uh, uh, in international talent, international investors, uh, is, is how do we connect it to it all most effectively and so forth. So this is really the, 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 the just a tiny tip of the iceberg of the information disconnectivity due to the fragmentation of the ecosystem information. And <clears throat> when we look at the, 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 the two kind of the key aspect of the ecosystem development we have, 
the, the, the sustainability and long-term perspective that we need to look after. And on the other hand, we have the quick and short-term tests and new elements and, and, and learnings that we need to apply. And we have this uh, uh, top-down thinking and top-down uh, actors and activities, and we have the bottom-up uh, energetic, uh, short-term, quick, uh, bottom-up actors uh, that, that are both um, have different dynamics when they look at uh, ecosystem development, but both are equally important uh, because of the different dynamics that they bring into the table. But the main challenge with that is that uh, when we think of the whole ecosystem concept, uh, by definition it's not owned by anyone, it's not really to be considered being controlled by anyone, it's therefore it also means that when we look at the freedom and the responsibility they work hand in hand so if it's not someone who whose responsibility it is who is the owner of the ecosystem it also means that there is nobody whose responsibility it in fact is to 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 make it work so what that leads to is it's a collective multi-stakeholder responsibility but as we can all understand, that doesn't work like that. So in practice, there needs to be someone who takes some of the functions in the ecosystem and starts looking after the, the, the everyone's shared interest towards where they are heading uh, with the ecosystem development overall. So the question really is that who should be that organization or how to structure uh, uh, this responsibility for the benefit of everyone to get to the, to the, to the right direction. So this gets to, um, to the terminology that lives around the ecosystem in, in, in a different way. So, uh, instead of thinking of controlling or managing uh, the ecosystem or, or owning it or, or even driving it, um, it's more of the orchestration aspect. So really to look at like that, like that bus driver, uh, they are there basically making sure that everyone gets where they need to go. Their main role is to keep everyone safe and the people in the bus can, you know, spend time on their mobile phones and you know chat with their family or whatever they need to do and, and feel comfortable that they are getting where it was agreed to be get but at the same time uh, the driver is there to drive uh, on behalf of the agreed destination and so forth so so really just looking after that <clears throat> the collectively decided uh, things are in actually happening so the orchestration is a, a neutral role, not a controlling role. So the other terminology to help is, is like a moderator in the in the in a panel session in an event is a very neutral role to drive uh, the conversation and making sure that the, the, the panel is, is a good one for the audience. A coordinator who is not so much doing the actual activities, but actually coordinating that the, the, the activities happen in a logical sense. Secretarial functions, taking notes, keeping information, communicating with information back to others, information management, communication, and so forth. So looking from the lens of ecosystem orchestration is the beginning part of then starting to look at how does a governance model uh, would look like around uh, this type of uh, mindset. And also looking at for, for what that is applied to, this is uh, from the perspective of looking at the different types of organizations, having the support organizations, having big companies, research organizations, higher education, service providers, funding organizations. And if we think of um, uh, the information flow and uh, keeping everyone informed between this, uh, it is very difficult for 
these organizations themselves to keep all the other organizations informed because they themselves also represent a key function in the ecosystem itself. So this becomes really a perspective question when we look at from the perspective of those who operate activities in the ecosystem versus the perspective that we're looking through this picture is how that, that, that uh, function of an orchestration gets into the picture. So some of the numbers indicated here, six applications, 15 two-way connections, five per each application. So this is like whether it's an organization or more deeply the applications in those organizations how to build the information sharing. The more there's organizations that need to think of it from their own perspective, the more complex it gets, the, the, the better the ecosystem develops. The more actors there are, the more activities there are, the more complex it gets to, to, to stay informed just between one-to-one -one relationship management. So, <clears throat> When we scale that up, once we are successful in the ecosystem development, when we get more of the organizations and actors on board saying, yes, we want to join this effort, yes, we want to collaborate, the more there are organizations and in, in technical level, the more there are applications to come think, think of sharing information, uh, the more and more challenging the, the, this picture gets. And but at the same time, when we look at that, what is actually why these organizations are part of the ecosystems, why are they counted part of the, the startup ecosystem mapping exercise, when we look at what organizations are relevant, who, what organizations or services belong to the ecosystem. The, the key thing that is, is, is uh, to understand is that they all share information from same elements that they're working with. So whether those are ideas growing into businesses, ideas growing into companies through interaction of multiple services, whether those are entrepreneurs navigating of different support services from you know, ideation workshops, startup weekends to incubators, to accelerators, to uh, through tens or hundreds of different event participations, uh, workshops to help develop the, the companies and their teams into organizations. Uh, those are all uh, same information and part of multiple different uh, uh, organizations, support functions and applications, so CRMs, event systems and so forth. And when we look at this, solving this, this puzzle, this problem, um, we need to start looking at the connection method. We need to start looking at access rights to that data. We need to start looking at information around uh, how can we build independently connectivity to your organization or your information? How will you document that information for others? Uh, what data, what information is they're actually to be shared about the ideas, about entrepreneurs, about mentors, about investors, about events. Um, what are the data models? So what, in what structure does the information exist in service A, service B, organization C, and so forth? And who should have the ownership of this data? And how does that data ownership should be uh, considered? So these are all key aspects of uh, thinking of why there needs to be someone that starts to look at this uh, from the governance perspective of starting to solve these problems. And for any ecosystem before there is some, someone who starts to look at things from this perspective, this problem never gets solved. It is basically, uh, um, impossible uh, problem to solve without building some model that has logical chance of being able to solve it. So a governance model that looks the whole ecosystem orchestration instead of only their own activities in context of the ecosystem. 
So this brings us to, to the concept of ecosystem operators and uh, the ecosystem operators are the ones who should start looking this from the operative perspective. So someone who actually looks this from doing activities in this context as their primary function. So, so that's, that's, that's the, the terminology. Uh, in addition to ecosystem orchestration, the operator is the one who just looks at making the system work and solving those problems that are forbidding or preventing uh, this type of um, uh, development to happen uh, from happening. So the ecosystem operator's role sit in between the bottom-up activities and top-down activities. So the key is that they don't represent either party, uh, they don't represent either key activity, they don't represent the government, they don't represent uh, the fund, funding organization, they don't represent uh, the entrepreneurs, they don't represent the accelerators, they don't represent the big companies, they don't represent any of those specifically, but they represent all of them collectively. And that is then the next, next phase to think that of that forward um, of how should then the ecosystem operator be structured and how the ecosystem should be, ecosystem operator should be governance and where does it get its mandate to, to become the operator for the ecosystem. And the key factor here also for the ecosystem operator is that that is the most important actor to get into a sustainable uh, long-term um, ability to continuously be there for the ecosystem. So <clears throat> the ecosystem operator's core areas are um, to focus on the key elements from holistic and neutral ecosystem perspective. So these are the types of things as uh, in Europe, uh, definitely GDPR, how does that apply at ecosystem level that connects into users data and user account information in CRM system, event systems and so forth. Uh, related uh, application programming interfaces between connecting those user accounts or having ecosystem level user accounts to connect different systems. Data and uh, key performance indicators that are ecosystem level, that are logistic, uh, logically connected in different levels for the ultimate output targets of the ecosystem all the way to individual uh, support function KPIs contributing for those output measures. Uh, service functions based data, so measuring the service processes, the effectiveness of a support function again being that mentoring advisory accelerator program or even individual workshop around uh, increasing topical knowledge of, of actors and so forth. Um, developing the overall user experience at ecosystem level. So instead of looking again individual support function or individual event or individual you know, location that is responsibility of that specific actor, instead looking at that uh, overall user experience from any ecosystem or actor's perspective, but in the lens of how do they assess, how do they interact, and how do they understand and visualize that uh, invisible infrastructure and that the ecosystem is, how does it make sense to them, and how does it, how, how the user experience can be improved in them navigating through the ecosystem. And then support local business growth via local connected applications and business model development. So really looking at how to improve the information flow and uh, develop uh, and measure or, to, or develop through measuring the different uh, activities and finding a a, a business models to sustain their own operations as well. 
that leads to maintaining the sustainability of overall strategy processes and resources, funding, knowledge base and related shorter and longer processes. So really uh, to be able to uh, carry on the, 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 the knowledge of the ecosystem uh, across uh, generations and decades uh, because uh, if all of that knowledge is only attached to individual experts or individual support organizations, it's not neutral enough, it's not holistic enough. If it's only attached to government uh, side, that is uh, uh, very much um, under political cycles where this level of activities don't carry, uh, unfortunately, such level of importance uh, like, like, uh, uh, like many other topics that uh, they are in risk of total knowledge being vaporized from the ecosystem uh, and many activities to be restarted again uh, after the priority uh, comes into play with the new, uh, new government. So, so there's a, a lot of different uh, aspects for, for, for ecosystem operator, but these are really the core areas. Um, and when we look at this uh, from the kind of the, 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 the uh, from key segments, we have the ecosystem framework to help to think about, we have the digital connectivity uh, as one key aspect. We have the metrics and the measurability and data flow as one of the key aspects. And then um, one more is to really protect um, the, the access to data, specifically protect users, individuals, users' data rights. When we look at uh, building data sharing uh, ability for the ecosystem level. So, <clears throat> To, to look at how to, to structure the ecosystem operator, we need to first look at uh, uh, the structure from another perspective. And, and this is um, what we call ecosystem forum. An ecosystem forum is more open. It's that inclusive um, uh, structure that doesn't really um, it's not operative in that sense, like the ecosystem operator. So ecosystem operator's responsibility and role and mandate should be to really look at the ecosystem development from operational progress perspective, whereas ecosystem forum perspective is uh, the whole process and uh, structure and uh, alignment around bringing all the ecosystem actors together to, to understand the ecosystem, to understand the current developments in the ecosystem, to, to divide and communicate about the priorities and the types of development areas that need to be developed, looking at uh, ecosystem development initiative, making decisions, uh, making ideations around what should be done and when and by whom and, and finding solutions to those. And, uh, and that should be more of an event format, something like having an ecosystem forum to come together uh, at least quarterly, maybe once a month, depending on the ecosystem size and level of progress or activities and to, to really have a structured agenda and format on how to go through the different uh, development initiatives, how to introduce new ones, how to prioritize the existing ones, how to track the progress of the existing ones, how to share resources or find new resources to make progress on the priority ones, and, uh, and, and really uh, be responsible of looking at uh, the initiatives being developed. So this can be divided in the specific topic teams and it can be divided on uh, specific task forces that takes on those topics and there's, there's overlapping uh, or cross-cutting themes like 
regulation or KPIs that apply to any topic and so forth. And out of this work and out of these outputs of the ecosystem forum efforts is the need that there needs to be someone who's driving those forward and who is keeping measures and who is practically working to make sure that these activities are moving forward regardless that they are not responsible of moving all of those topics forward themselves but they are um, responsible of keeping track that they are that progress is being made or what progress is being made and reporting that back uh, to everyone and making sure that this knowledge or this progress doesn't disappear just because a task force stopped working on it or uh, or a topic team um, just vaporized because of people involved didn't any anymore have momentum on that because that's the nature of uh, the multi-stakeholder collaboration on its own without having the governance structures or proper structures on top of uh, uh, on top of that or in addition to that. So when we complete this picture, uh, we need to in introduce, in addition to the forum that is the driving force of the communication activities, how new initiatives can be um, uh, activated, how they can be prioritized, how their progress can be measured, how the resourcing can be shared between multiple actors and so forth. The ecosystem operator uh, comes into the picture to look at how to like properly keep maintain that information visible to everyone, how to be a contact point to, to introduce the right people to to right topics when when new things come into play. But do that in a neutral aspect of just making sure that whatever the ecosystem forum puts on the plate keeps moving forward. And then in addition to look at these cross-cutting themes at the whole ecosystem level that were covered on the ecosystem operators core functions, the KPIs, the digital aspect, the data ownership rights, and so forth. So the whole uh, digital aspect of the entire ecosystem, connectivity and data sharing is one of the, the biggest key uh, responsibilities for the ecosystem operator to take responsibility as a neutral actor uh, or otherwise it is not realistically to expect that that type of uh, solutions can be taken care of by uh, just bottom-up activity. So looking at the sustainability of the digital development, looking at the sustainability of information uh, and knowledge share over time and developing tools and services and growing the number of participants, connections, matching, rules and start standards and so forth that are all raised from the bottom-up uh, bottom approach, inclusive approach but then concluded by the ecosystem actors together and then based on that the ecosystem operator takes the responsibility to push that forward together with whatever resources, additional resources would be available by any of the ecosystem actors, whether that's knowledge, whether that's finance and so forth. Uh, and then uh, last but not least, uh, this ecosystem operator entity should be structured uh, wisely so that it has a public and private uh, representation uh, of the, the, the cornerstone organization. Typically the government, uh, some of the universities, um, those that are extremely sustainable over time and have a significant role to contribute and, and, and look after the, uh, the society or the, the, the local economy from introducing talent, making sure that, the, the, that there's knowledge, uh, needed, needed knowledge introduced in the, in the talent and that uh, there are proper um, uh, responsibility to look after uh, the sustainability of the ecosystem operator entity 
but also private side, uh, bigger companies, maybe banks, uh, these types of actors who have a significant and long-term perspective into the ecosystem, uh, both from the perspective of how they can contribute for that and also how does it benefit their business and operation in form of better knowledge, better information, uh, better decisions, faster decisions in their own operations and so forth. And then the last piece is how to design um, the, uh, the, the, the board of the actual governance then at the at ultimate level. So if the ecosystem operator is a foundation or if it's a, a private company structure but owned by government and uh, key stakeholders or whatever the or maybe it's an association um, it doesn't matter whatever is the most fitting into local um, jurisdiction and local uh, uh, setting but it should have a, a, a either official board or in minimum uh, the official board should be of course the key stakeholders that provide the biggest resources but even the board should uh, operate on the uh, mandate of the advisory board and the advisory board should be structured from key actors of the key ecosystem functions representing entrepreneurs, representing uh, accelerators, representing uh, investors, representing event organizers and so forth and so forth so that the, 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 there is a representation of uh, the best knowledge of the ecosystem key activities also on, um, uh, on, on top of the ecosystem operator activity. So this way the operator really becomes the middle actor, the neutral middle actor for the ecosystem only looking to make sure that uh, all of the ecosystem actors are actually getting to the same shared destination. So there is a structure to put in place uh, to really look at how the governance should be uh, organized in the local ecosystem setting. And, and unfortunately uh, or fortunately many ecosystems have uh, the, uh, a lot of these pieces they do have in place some of the activities but the picture is not complete and, and the, the most needed uh, actor or the, the biggest missing component typically is that there is no uh, ecosystem operator who only looks at the ecosystem operator as a neutral actor to push that forward. So <clears throat> when we look at the ecosystem operator's role, what's locally important is to really have a clear mandate, roles and responsibility in ecosystem orchestration at different functions and levels. So that mandate and those roles and responsibilities should be defined by uh, the ecosystem operator's um, advisory board represented by the ecosystem actors as well as uh, open uh, development, open conversations and conclusions from the ecosystem forum. It should have a clearly defined vision, mission and roadmap with strategy and plans. Again, created uh, in a process through an ecosystem forum and uh, the advisory board and the official board of the ecosystem operator. Uh, it should focus on being a neutral actor with a capable team governed by the key ecosystem actors. So they're really, the neutrality is a key, ecosystem as their primary responsibility is a key, capable team, meaning that there needs to be good capacity in the ecosystem understanding, understanding about innovation, entrepreneurship and startups, understanding about the ecosystem development, but most importantly also strong capabilities around digital transformation, uh, software applications uh, and digital economy overall. All those combined uh, in the same shared, small enough 
capable, effective team. To be able to also focus on information management uh, from ecosystem actors and support services. Uh, so basically keeping that uh, always up to date mapping of all the actors, organizations and services in digital format, uh, development initiatives, what are the development initiatives, what are their priorities, what are their current status, what is holding them back, what progress there has been made, how they are being measured, what are those measures indicating, <clears throat> and then overall statistics and outcomes. So not only measuring the development initiatives, but also measuring the statistics and outcomes perspective of the ecosystem as a whole, and then uh, in different development phases and in development and specific types of services like all of the accelerators, their outputs, best performing accelerators, all of the incubators, their outputs, best performing incubators, best return of investments, uh, on the same measures that are collectively agreed, shared and used. And then uh, finally, to make all that happen is to systematically on an ongoing basis focus on connectivity and data flow, uh, data portability and sharing models. So really making the connectivity happen at application level in practice and doing that starting from step by step from simple connectivity to increase more based on the priorities set by the ecosystem forum actors. Uh, making sure that the KPIs make sense at the ecosystem level between actors as well as logically connecting to the outcome, uh, the, to the overall KPIs for the whole ecosystem, which of course is to make sure that there's a growing number of uh, good growing companies coming out of the ecosystem and on the other end that there is new talent and ideas increasingly uh, joining the ecosystem. And then uh, looking all the time of uh, developing the sustainable resourcing, meaning that there is right people that can sustain their positions to a longer development at the, the most important core activities needed for the ecosystem development. And this doesn't start by thinking, okay, where do we get new resources? Uh, it starts by looking at what resources we are currently working on and how we can pull those resources together, find share, shareable things where we don't have to reinvent the wheel and build same things by different actors over and over again, but instead pull those resources, work on shared things, and at the same time uh, free resources for the types of activities uh, to start sustaining uh, the, the types of activities that um, are new because there are savings that can be cut from existing ones and those savings can be moved to start looking at the types of things that bring uh, additional resources uh, or freeze resources to, to do new things that are not being able to done because nobody is looking at that collective, um, uh, uh, collective and effective uh, resource pooling. And then <clears throat> together with other operators globally, so now when we, you can visualize ecosystems having operators in each of the ecosystems uh, and their focus is their own ecosystem and the key activities there, then what they can do together between other operators is to look at the, the connectivity for all ecosystem levels and functions. So looking at more global standards, global open standards um, and pooling of resources across multiple ecosystems. So whether they are neighboring cities or whether they are cities in the same country or whether they are two twin cities uh, or French cities between different countries uh, to look at, okay, what are the activities where we can pool resources, do that together and implement in both of our ecosystems. 
it is to share best practices and applications and solutions, KPIs, whatnot, uh, from one ecosystem to another, uh, <clears throat> and also to look at what best practices and software or KPIs or whatnot can be imported from other ecosystem to ours. And to key to make that all happen <coughs> is also to look at the, the, the standards that can be collectively developed uh, around uh, the compatibility of moving these best practices on applications or KPIs across ecosystems and key keys when it comes to information and data and standards, one of the key pieces, data models, which is basically the structure of what data exists in our ecosystem in different functions, and how can we make that compatible with other ecosystems so we can send and we can write and read information between the ecosystem functions within and between ecosystems. Um, APIs, so that's application programming interfaces, those are the actual connectivity between uh, aggregated information from our ecosystem uh, to connect to other ecosystems. What are the interfaces, how we can share this type of uh, information across ecosystem, for example, measuring accelerator support function cross ecosystems or any other function. Um, so these are two working together again with other ecosystems. Uh, building shared documentation. So documentation and data models are two of the kind of very key pieces where everyone has to create those to make things work. If we choose to do same or similar, we can work with same data models and we can work therefore with same documentation and therefore we can work with shared resourcing and shared efforts uh, that we again freeze resources to do more on our local activities where we don't have to reinvent and create everything in our own ecosystem just because we choose not to build compatibility and uh, open standard based models with others. So creating standards is, is a key piece of that uh, to the responsibility of creating standards for your own ecosystem and operation models doesn't stop there because the next silo would be your own ecosystem. So to collaborate with others to really develop open standards with uh, uh, other operators globally, the more there are standards, the more uh, connectivity and comparability and uh, connect, um, data sharing there can be. And we can all imagine the world without standards. And it's actually a great video in YouTube that you can search by world without standards and you'll get some funny things there uh, that um, may, may make you laugh when you look at those, but doesn't necessarily make you laugh when you think of your ecosystem. Uh, development efforts and uh, realizing that uh, there's a big lack of um, effort even around building open standards uh, for this development. And then, um, because building the sustainability and, and better business models also for ecosystem operators to sustain um, <clears throat> developing models for data monetization is a big piece. Uh, data is extremely valuable. Uh, the better the data is, the bit more compatible it is, the more structured it is, the more available it is, the more real-time it is, the more historical data it includes, and so forth, the more valuable the data is. And there can be many different ways to build monetization for big multinational companies uh, for research data, innovation data, uh, for public sector, for, for policy making, for many different aspects where that data, even at its simplest statistical format, let alone more informative data, 
uh, it's extremely valuable and as such a monetization opportunity <coughs> to uh, to to um, sustain the operations of actually being to collecting that while even using it for our own ecosystem anyway. So these are all the types of things and of course learnings, collective learnings and more. These are all the types of things to, to really look at how to collaborate and work together with other operators globally. So really the ecosystem operators key focus and role is to be effective, sustainable and systematic development and orchestration with long-term perspective as a neutral actor for the ecosystem. And then the other core function and foundational piece is to look at the digital and data, the software, the APIs, data economy driven, real-time, globally competitive and connected digital single market. So really developing that aspect of it. And a, a big point of uh, looking at this from the aspect of if there is no local ecosystem operator doesn't mean that these things don't happen. They do happen and everything is always happening uh, anyway, specifically in the, in the global digital landscape. landscape. It just means that the value of those digital tools and data typically go somewhere else than the local own economy and ecosystem. So, so by, by creating focus around own ecosystem and capturing the benefits in, in the own ecosystem development needs and all the other monetization needs and making that data still available but not for free, uh, not by just because it, it, that's how it happens now, uh, being uninformed and also uh, losing value without even measuring it as a lost value in economic development is, is the problem that uh, each of the ecosystems are pushing forward in their own economic development if they don't start looking at these aspects from how do we do this um, for ourselves, uh, for, uh, for us, for ourselves, by ourselves, but in a way where we are part of the global economy in a digital sense, in a smart way. So <clears throat> it really is about designing it to have best of, best of both, both worlds. So to make things sustainable, those who take care of others need to be equipped, by pro equipped properly and taken care of as well. So, so this means that uh, not only the ecosystem operators which is the entity form uh, key structure to get in place for long-term sustainable development of the ecosystem uh, development and, uh, and, and then operate it uh, with the mandate of ecosystem forum uh, structure. Uh, it's also the individuals who work on ecosystem builders, as ecosystem builders and ecosystem developers. It's, it is important that there are structures to make these development roles sustainable. Um, until they are uh, made sustainable, the, the, the randomness and the fragmentation and sometimes even several years setbacks with missing or disappearing knowledge and information uh, or political cycles will keep repeating in every single economy uh, um, repeatedly. So, so there is ways to get there, uh, there is models and structures to get there, uh, but it is a collective effort to, to, to actually get there. So, the ecosystem operator is accountable for entrepreneurship and ecosystem development, but it needs to sustain politi political and economic cycles. So that's why the structure needs to be uh, created so that it has a strong and broad and wide mandate 
but that it has also uh, sustainable resources to perform its responsibility as a neutral actor for the ecosystem. So one of the aspects to, to when we look at the entity structure is that uh, some of these these are like fundamental principles that we are, are discussing here. Um, is, is some of those can be hard coded and this depends on like how the different models in different countries are the foundations typically are uh, such that there can be these foundational principles can be really hard coded into the entity when it's established or then the more modern things is like blockchain smart contracts so um, there are structures uh, to make it so that nobody can hijack the operator when it becomes extremely valuable or that its mandate doesn't change to uh, just cater for certain types of companies or big companies or so forth um, but um, there's there's much more around that so just wanting to highlight this point that there are ways of getting structures in place that can sustain time that uh, and some of the the well-known global actors that are very much operating on one hand with these types of principles is like Kaufman Foundation in the US uh, for entrepreneurship set up by a rich entrepreneur uh, several decades ago who hard-coded the principles and gave the fin uh, funding for the foundation of how it should operate and how it should not operate and of course there's a lot of um, wisdom in that model but uh, of course over time some of those hard-coded principles can be limiting uh, but nevertheless uh, it can sustain time in, in those structures uh, and, then, and here also an example of financially sustainable foundation model uh, can be that uh, there's an initial capital that is given by the, 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 the founding members which is whatever the, the funding is that the funding itself is actually not used to do any of the operations but it's only invested into global markets and only the, the returns of investment can be used for operational expenditure to, to keep the structure sustainable pretty much forever if it's structured uh, with right levels of capital and the, the cost structure has a buffer to, to, to sustain non-profitable years of that model and in addition it's then supported with uh, sponsorship funding and uh, other revenue sources for example monetizing data and so forth so all of these models exist it's just getting there and, and starting to put this in place and having enough rationale and justification and, and uh, uh, facts around or combined experience around to understand the significance and the need of this putting these uh, governance models in place <clears throat> so again at ecosystem level moderator orchestrator coordinator secretary of functions information management communication and so forth. That is a neutral actor uh, key um, position to enabling data flow, collection, connectivity, distribution, protection, and creating monetization opportunities. So data is really the, 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 the key essence of, of uh, reducing that fragmentation and to be data driven in the development activities and so forth. So really taking this as the primary responsibility at ecosystem level. So the digital economic development of city, region or country must be managed by knowledgeable and capable people under clear mandate. And uh, if not, then it is unfortunately slips easily and the control of foreign governments are free, freely monopolized by private businesses. So of course we already know and there's big examples of how this is happening 
in the in the ever accelerating and, and on one hand uh, complex digital world, but at the same time that same development creates the, the vast opportunities for new businesses and economies and jobs to be created, as well as works as the R and D department to solve all of the various wicked problems that the world is facing. So, but we have to find a, a, a logical model and have that in place in all of our own ecosystems. <clears throat> so, yes, uh, another simplified structure to really look at that ecosystem operator's role uh, uh, above. So we have the ecosystem forum kind of around or below, but then the ecosystem op operator focus on support digital and connectivity, information management and communication, and then having the governance board with these advisory groups that can represent, one group can represent like the startup entrepreneurs in general, one can, group can uh, address you know, the educational uh, organizations, one group can represent the investors and so forth, and then uh, there needs to be the founding financiers by the, the biggest and, and um, uh, the, the, the longest history um, key organizations from public and private side, mainly the government, university, uh, governments, uh, local, state, national, uh, uh, the universities and the big companies including local and even including multinational ones uh, with their significant presence in the local ecosystems in a smart way. So <clears throat> here's a, 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 a budgeting example for just to kind of give some ideas of, of uh, structuring a revenue source um, or having what type of personnel that should be in place as the expertise for that uh, sustainable operations and, uh, and then what type of fees they could be collected, for example, from data monetization or providing the information or providing the support functions and so forth. And this is just a, a really simplified model, but the, the point is to indicate that uh, that there is a model uh, and there should be a financial model that should be looked at and should be played around to find a comfortable level. And then whatever this model is, there can be separate subsidies, there can be separate project funding, there can be separate initial capitals, there can be uh, various different aspects, but um, to, it, it helps to start putting it down, breaking it down and looking at those numbers in a realistic lens and seeing that how would that actually look like? How would a, um, our ecosystem operator's budget look like? How would the resources look like? What benefits it could create? What would be the willingness of someone to pay directly? Uh, or what would be the value if someone pays funding directly, if government you know, provides subsidies so entrepreneurs don't pay directly or maybe startups pay at some point when they acquire real benefits out of it and so forth. But uh, this is just a, a simplified model to, to get that thought process going. So next, looking at uh, the culture aspect. So we've talked about the fundamental things, the principles, the only things that are, only the things that can be understood can be developed and to build that understanding it requires knowledge, it requires knowledge like what we are providing here, it requires knowledge that is coming from the data and information being collected, it comes from uh, the silent knowledge that needs to be made tangible and visible uh, by those who have accumulated it over time and so forth. That's how the understanding is built and with that understanding it's more knowledgeable development of what do we actually want to change and improve. Understanding about the startups, 
understanding really what makes innovation entrepreneurship work how does it actually work in practice building something out of nothing how does it actually work to take an idea and push that into a significant company uh, and making that knowledge available in an effective, scalable way and, uh, and, and making that available for everyone who are making, who are taking part or at least those who are making decisions impacting the ecosystem uh, activities for others. So here we have um, the key piece of the, the framework. So building things around the startup uh, model and the startup development phases uh, model and applying that framework into the, not only the, the uh, how to build startups, startup development, which we have a separate uh, growth academy curriculum and a certification model to train trainers uh, that train other trainers and, and to combine that with uh, licensable, scalable uh, uh, digital knowledge combined with knowledgeable trainers who can train the same content. And underneath that we have the whole curriculum is under Creative Commons, so the curriculum itself is really available. Um, as well as an independent component. But it requires that type of cultural collective recognition to make sure that all of the key knowledge, not meaning the knowledge what we have, but knowledge what we have indexed and put a framework around and put the rationale and logic around, <coughs> is really made available uh, effectively and scalably to everyone. From policy making, to investors, to mentors, to entrepreneurs, to talent, so that they can speak the same language. That is the beginning part to be able to build, you know, data models, open standard data models around what is a startup. Um, so uh, it is each of the piece, uh, are pieces of building that culture. So having really a, a learning resources that are effective, affordable for everyone who needs those. Um, a 24-7, 365 e-learning service contributing to increase the base volume of innovation, entrepreneurship mindset, and measuring future potential. <clears throat> but also same applies for ecosystem developers, policy makers, not only to understand about ecosystem development, but to understand why the ecosystem development, how does it connect with actual innovation building through startups. So, um, so here's the summary of the, the, the curriculum and the Growth Academy for Innovation Entrepreneurship uh, is through, uh, through these modules and the module one covers the, the overall like a snapshot summary of the whole journey from the eyes of investable, investment ready uh, companies, regardless of whether they take investment or not, but how does it look from the eyes of the investor uh, and from the ecosystem uh, actors perspective. We have module 1B, which is basically looking at from the support function perspective, uh, specifically that journey and uh, from ecosystem development perspective. A small snapshot of, of that as one module in that curriculum, uh, just a few hours, whereas similarly here we have just a small snapshot of this curriculum on the ecosystem development uh, academy side. Then we have module two that focuses on the formation phase, we have module three that focuses on validation phase, and module four that focuses on scaling phase of uh, innovation entrepreneurship, building uh, new scaling companies and startups um, from the ecosystems. So it, it's it's a it's a model that can be 
injected into the academic side of contributing to educate and empower the current and future generation of ecosystem builders, developers and operators, along with any individuals and entities who focus on economic development via entrepreneurship innovation uh, for new job creation and attractive investments. So it's to understand the journey that the entrepreneurs go through, or the startups go through, or the talent to co-founders to growing organizations go through, and then to understand the ecosystem development around it. And uh, in addition to uh, uh, to make available a open digital library of the local ecosystem knowledge uh, and combined with uh, whatever all other key knowledge that is uh, needed by regardless of different roles of the ecosystem actors and, and really look at uh, how to combine the knowledge library development <coughs> with the ecosystem forum process or flow that um, it is not something that is a stale uh, knowledge library but it's a dynamic also to be improved with new findings that are based on actual validations through the actual measurements and KPIs. So it really when there is no barriers to access knowledge itself, when there is no proprietary structures that are overly limiting of making that knowledge available. It pushes everyone to go one step further and start looking at, well, what is then the areas where we can build additional value because the value that already exists is made accessible to everyone. So this is also, of course, what we practice by, by us making and uh, us having and making such education available we help to create this common language and potential uh, for the ecosystem actors to better collaborate with each other and even more so to be establishing those ecosystem operators, getting the ecosystem operating and orchestration functions cleared and then helping to connect those ecosystem operators with each other to develop the, the, the global aspect of opportunities for all of those growing companies um, that grow out from the different ecosystems, enter the global markets to build connections and land in different ecosystems to build their business there, collaborate with local ecosystems and so forth. 